morning, welcome to everybody uh, and to those who are online. Uh, it is uh, my pleasure to introduce Professor Jan Ruffman from the University of Bergen in Norway in the Department of Informatics in the Faculty of Mathematics and Natural Sciences. Uh, Professor Ruffman is um, an, a very well-known uh, specialist in our field and we know from many years ago. Uh, he was a member of my thesis committee, so <laughs> it's uh, quite time uh, ago. And um, he's a specialist in uh, several branches of mathematical programming, in nonlinear optimization, in uh, by level uh, uh, optimization, in semi infinite programming, in parametric optimization, DA, um, and so on. And uh, today he is going to speak about mathematical programs with complementarity constraints. Uh, if you look to his uh, web page, you can find, uh, I think, 88 uh, papers, so it's uh, quite a lot. And uh, nothing more to say, so it's uh, our pleasure to have you here. Welcome. Muchas gracias. Uh, I will also present my presentation in English here. Uh, if there are any questions, I can also speak a little bit Spanish. Uh, thank you very much, Juan, for the nice introduction. And of course, I remember your thesis defense. <laughs> <laughs> 25 years ago, I think 99. <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, I will talk about uh, mathematical programs with complementarity constraints and focus on strong stability of C stationary points. So, some of you will have seen some of the slides already, but now I have the opportunity to, just, to show this with more details here. The point is that uh, this is some small part of our research, or because it is together with my co author, uh, Daniel Hernandez Escobar. He made his PhD in 2020, mm -hmm. he's now in Sweden. And uh, also, there are other co authors which I lined up here, didn't line up here. For example, Harald Pinsel from, from Aachen in Germany. Uh, and what we did was we looked at mathematical programs with complementarity constraints for many years already now. And there are several stationarity concepts. I will come back to this in a moment with more details. We are focusing on one C stationary points, as you can see. There are other M stationarity, P stationarity, and so on. Uh, and uh, for all of them, we try to focus on this property of strong stability. I will come to this in a moment, what that means. Strong stability to address only one short common first refers to well coasting properties. Yeah, existence uniqueness and continuous dependence on the data. And uh, we did it for several classes of stationary points. Here we we'll focus on C stationarity, uh, but uh, there are also existing results for others. I will say a word about motivation for C stationary points uh, in a moment. Okay, so let us start. Um, okay, we are looking at finite limit. Constraints. This is what's written there. And uh, we have uh, always C2. So it makes it really easy to first and second order in derivatives uh, to uh, uh, write, uh, to, to think about sufficient and, su uh, sufficient and necessary conditions for strong stability. So this is the class we are looking at mathematical programs with complementarity constraints. Uh, most of you would know that, of course. The point is here that we have, so I have to try this, yeah. Here is a big difference to the standard, uh, to the standard uh, linear program, nonlinear programming problem. We have the finite number, this L is the index set here, and what we just saw. There is the finite index set, and we have finite in many pairs minimum of two functions must be zero. And this particular class of constraints has different topological properties than in the standard case. In the standard case, we have a function, everything is nice and it's manifold locally. 
one purpose boundary, but the manifold. So here we have the two functions, Rn, as R1 and S1, and if we take it as, as a new constraint, a new variables, then locally it looks like that. And you can see already, this is not smooth. Yeah? We have this kink here, and this is for one constraint, so we can imagine that uh, if we have finitely many, then uh, we have finitely many of these figures together in this point. And that means the whole story becomes some kind of combinatorial influence. Yeah, we have to combine um, what happened in each of these uh, physical sets locally. And of course, we have to look at two points here, at this kink. Something is happening, so that we cannot manage with our tools on machinery, which we know for non linear optimization. And if we are near such a point, Let's say this is R1 and this is S1. Yeah, look here, this is always forming a pair. Then at this point, R1 is 0 and uh, S1 is greater than 0, which means this is locally like the situation when we have equality constraints. So this is nothing new locally. Yeah? The interesting point is happening here. What happens when we have uh, both? Of these functions, which is quite a pair, are uh, equal to zero. Okay. So then, uh, as I already said, what we are looking at is strong stability. We will find that in a moment. But what I already said, strong stability refers exactly to these values and properties: so existence, uniqueness, locally existence, local uniqueness, and dependence on the data. Continuous dependence on the data. And the question is, the data can be disturbed, so I'm generally small, up to second order. That means the problem itself can be described in dependence on this data. So this data, as is a perturbation of the data, need not to be only real data, not the function itself. The functions themselves are considered as uh, data, and we allow around the considered point uh, local perturbations up to second order, as with respect to the function, with respect to the first and second derivative. And then the question is, is there a uniquely determined solution around such a perturbed problem, uh, for such a perturbed problem around the considered point? Um, okay, so we have here a small example, only to generalize a little bit. We have two, two pairs here. Okay, so here is the first pair, minimize x1 and x2, so at least one of them must be zero. Yeah, we have here x1 and x2. And here the second pair is like here. So this is nice for the last function, very easy. But we will see later, when we come back to this example, that already here, when we have very similar, very simple functions, um, that there could be a problem with this kink. Well, the, the, the king means here the origin. Oh. Here, this king. Uh, we will. I come back to this example later. Okay. So I, I wrote it here a little bit. There are a lot of applications which I will not discuss here. Only as some uh, uh, keywords. So uh, we know that MPCC became very modern in the 90s already because a lot of uh, real life applications can be modeled using this MPCC. And uh, here I give it only two things, by level optimization, non-linear, uh, fundamentality problems, here is something more. And uh, also strong stability, that is the second keyword of the title. I say that well closeness, yeah, which of course goes especially sensitivity analysis and parametric optimization. What happens if we perturb our problem a little bit and the question arises naturally? Uh, can we say something about uniqueness, existence, and so on? Uh, solution, stationary points for, okay, so here that's not just what I said. Uh, but I come back now to that what I mentioned in the beginning. We are looking at C stationary points. 
And contrary to uh, the nonlinear standard optimization problem, where we have a clear and the unique definition of a stationary point for the class of mathematical problems with complementarity constraints, there are several concepts of stationarity C stationarity, M stationarity, S stationary, and so on. The question is why looked we first on C stationary points? And the reason for that, I ask in the following. These are the class of stationary points, although there are more, uh, there's another class which are looking more on the minimizers. So the C stationary point class is much broader. Yeah? But the reason for this is the following it comes from the generalization of um, the mass theory. Most of you know from the 60s, when you look at an, 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 an one function only, you look at one function depending on two variables, and that means we have here some three dimensions. Then what says the most theory? The most theory says when we are looking at the feasible level sets, so we have only one function, so we look at the level sets, but if you look, if we put it in an optimization context, the feasible level sets, uh, how does it look? So if we go with the level up here in this direction, then we have here, the level set is empty. Then when we go up a little bit, first we come to this first minimum, that means our level set consists of a point. Then we go further up, uh, as perhaps we make it here again, we got this kind of component, and then further on, a new component is born here, more or less. Okay, and then we go further up, here and here, and uh, when we are passing this set, uh, this uh, settle point here, we go looks like <coughs> that a little bit. And then both components will come together, and this is more or less the situation in the classical um, in the classical uh, more theory. And then we see when when uh, changes appear in the level set, which is important. For example, if we look at global optimization problems, huh? when we see okay, there's a new component born or both components come together. And yeah, then everybody knows that here, here, and here is a change of the topological structure. Uh, these two are topologically equivalent, and uh, changes are exactly when the stationary point appears, when minimizer appears, or the settle point. Yeah. This is classical most theory from the 90s. In the 80s, Bert Jongen, uh, the generalized is for non optimization problems, is not only for the function, but also taking into account constraints. And then, uh, 10 years ago, also we and the Bernd Longer, Vladimir Meshitman, and myself wrote a paper about critical point theory for now comes mathematical problems, mathematical problems with complementarity constraints. And there we showed that such a Topological change, change exactly appears when C stationary points appear. That's why C stationary points uniquely describes the topological changes in these feasible level sets. Uh, so not M stationarity, not S stationarity, although they are they are more restrictive with respect to local minimalness, but for the topological behavior. C stationarity is exactly the class of the stationarity points which uh, are needed here. Okay, so this is some kind of motivation. Why are we looking at C stationary points here? Okay, but again, we, in the meantime, we have also papers, uh, one of them just appeared now in October. This is in, for, the, for the volume of parametric optimization comes out of our final in October. And there we have M stationary points, and uh, we asked there also about strong stability. 
Okay? So I will uh, look here on three different classes of problems. Uh, after some preliminar preliminaries, we will uh, look at the so called condition C star. And then we have three classes where we are discussing strong stability. This is again a small part of a big uh, group of, of, of papers we wrote about the stationality concepts and strong stability. Okay, so some notations here, which is not so important. Important will be, okay, let's write this down first. Two things are here important to understand. We will, uh, for a vector w, we uh, look at those components which are zero, e zero, i zero, and those which are non-zero, because that will play an important role. Also, the last point is uh, that we are looking at the set of neighborhoods uh, of the point under consideration. So x bar will always be all point under consideration in the following, and the derivative, and so on. Okay, so let's start with preliminaries. And now comes a little bit technique. It's here, it must come in a moment. And uh, we will look at some uh, index sets, but I have written them here. So please, uh, you need not to remember that in the following always. Um, what we are looking at is uh, let's look here. This uh, is a situation when one of the uh, pairs, one of the functions in each pair, in this pair is zero and the other is non-zero. So that means we are, I have this picture here, let me repeat this. This is this situation or this situation. But this is exactly locally if you have more quality constraints. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so this is topologically or how to handle it is the same as in the case of nonlinear programming. The interesting point is what happens here if both are zero. Yeah. And if both are zero, this is exactly here the following. This is the interesting index set. Both are zero. What are we doing with these pairs or with these index, indices here, uh, which belong to the set IRS? Where well, something must be that must happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we will uh, notate the number of constraints by n0 for the problem P and the at our point under consideration x bar. Okay, let us assume that those uh, vectors here are linearly dependent. Right? If they are independent, then for this case, it was already considered if everything is independent of the active constraints. Uh, this case was uh, in a paper in 2014, I think, by Young and Schickman. As if everything is uh, LICQ, we will not consider this. Our case is the interesting case, of course, at the moment the plastic is when they are linearly dependent. And we define here a constraint product given of the Mangozan province type. And we call it C MFCQ. Remember the reference obviously to C stationary points here. And you can see the definition here. The important part is uh, the first part is obviously uh, referring to this equality constraint, neighborhood consideration. So this is like the Manasar Bromwitz constraint. Quality, the grades of the quality constraints are not independent. But here now, what comes into play additionally, uh, we, we say that this combination, now we are in this IRS, also in, for those pairs where both are fulfilled as equality constraints, equal to zero. Yeah? These are the key points. And we say for each lambda in this uh, convex combination, the next thing here, maybe that. For each lambda varying from 0 to 1, the corresponding uh, gradients together with uh, the gradients of the, the equality constraints here are linearly independent. This is a very strong condition, obviously. It looks a little bit like a hard condition. 
Yeah, that is, for all combinations, uh, there must something be fulfilled. And uh, we will see that the Mandelson and Roberts constraint operation, as we see in optical, is related to strong stability. Uh, we know this result from nonlinear programming. Nonlinear programming, there are some of the papers also the same in programming that strong stability implies a magnetic group. We will see that it is related, but it is not, it does not imply it. And we will see an example where CMFC2 is not true, but we have strong stability. Okay, but we come to this in a moment. Uh, now, of course, we use all our machinery, you know, like much a function, and we define now station, C stationary point, so we mentioned it many times, we didn't define it so far. Uh, and let's look at the definition here. So we have the Lagrange function, the gradient with respect to x. This is like in the classical case. Then we have complementarity constraints. This is also like in the classical case. But then comes something which is new and which is exactly now the new thing which comes into play. Namely, it says that uh, the the Lagrange uh, multipliers, or uh, where am I? Yeah. The Lagrange multipliers, go n and sigma n, uh, should not have the same uh, 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 different sides. Should not have different sides. So it cannot be, the product cannot be less than zero, as both are positive, both are negative, or one of them is at least That is the definition of the C stationary point, which especially means also both could be negative. And so this is something different to the classical uh, stationary point definition, where the Lagrange uh, multipliers for inequality constraints need to be positive. OK, so we define then the uh, set of six stationary points, the corresponding set of Lagrange vectors, uh, at this point under consideration. And in order to say something about perturbation sufficiently small, we need some kind of same norm. So this is defined here. So we take into account the, uh, the values of the functions, the first gradient and the second gradient, because they're written as a vector here. And of course, it depends on the, uh, it depends on the, the, the neighborhood we are considering. Yeah. Capital B here. It's called the same norm because it's restricted to the neighborhood. Right? The norm should be different. It would be a norm and it should be everywhere. Uh, okay. And then with these uh, two rules now, same norm, we can define the, uh, the neighborhood of a given problem P, P, uh, P bar. And we say, okay, with respect to the same norm and with respect to B, this neighborhood of X bar, we can define. Uh, the measure for the public the perturbation is. So this is needed now for the strong stability definition. Okay? And uh, now we can say what we mean, the strong stability. Yeah, you can see it. It looks like a continuity, continuity definition. And we say we have a neighborhood of uh, our point under consideration, and P of X R delta bar for the delta bar positive, and <coughs> there should, for each uh, perturbed, suddenly small perturbed problem, we have exactly one point, <coughs> and we have more, we can say, we can make this uh, uh, neighborhood smaller and smaller and smaller, and also for this neighborhood, we get exactly that to have one uh, uniquely determined stationary point. Perhaps uh, some historical remarks as uh, this strong stability was introduced by Kojima in, in the 80s for stationary points in nonlinear programming. So the definition can be written down without a problem. You know, we say existence, uniqueness, and uh, continuous dependence on the data. That is what strong stability means. We know from natural equations and so on uh, that it's exactly the well, closeness, then, closeness, then con con condition. The point is, with this definition, we cannot handle it. And we cannot check is a given point strong and stable or not. You know, this 
cannot handle this definition. So the challenge for uh, managing strong stability is to find, besides this topological characterization, an algebraic uh, 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 characterization. And uh, this was what Kojima did first in the 80s for nonlinear optimization problem. He wrote down equivalent, this is an important point, equivalent definition of strong stability by using first and second order derivatives. Yeah, as an algebraic condition, which, at least in the happy case, could be handled yeah, in contrast to this definition. And that was, of course, the challenge also for us. Yeah, is it possible to describe strong stability for problems with mathematical problems with complementarity constraints for you know, algebraic terms? Yeah, so we're using first and second order derivatives, and this was what's coming up in a moment. Uh, but this is a principal challenge. Yeah, I would emphasize this again: topological characterization and an equivalent. Algebraic uh, characterization. Okay, so then we sigma of P bar was a set of C stationary points, and CS is then the set of strong stable C stationary points. So we come to the first condition, which is related to uh, strong stability. We will see in a moment how. Uh, first, we make this definition for a constraint qualification, we call it CQ, CQ1. And uh, you see, we have here similar situation for the equality constraints, and uh, only one of them is uh, uh, equals to zero. Uh, and this set here, Ri is zero, Si is positive, Ri is positive, and Si is zero. These are the quality constraints we don't care. Yeah. Uh, but then the, the part IRS, uh, this, this part here, both are zero. There, yeah. where the kink is. Yeah. And uh, we see now it looks very similar to the definition of CMFCQ, but there's one big difference. Here we say only. Lambda m is zero or lambda m is one. In the minus one complex constraint qualification, we say for all lambdas varying from zero to one, the corresponding set is independent. Here we only say Rm or Sm. Yeah. Okay. Moment. Okay. And uh, here we see already where the connection is between CQ1 and strong stability, and then we get here this necessary condition. If we have uh, in, if we have a strong stable point, then CQ1 has to be fulfilled. Not a necessary condition, first not enough, but if it's not fulfilled, then we know it's not strongly stable. Okay? Then uh, we make a second constraint qualification. CQ2. And so we say when we choose n, we are in the Rn, rule story is in the n dimensional space. If we are choosing n vectors, then they must be linearly independent. When we choose any n vectors from the uh, active uh, gradient set, and then CQ2 is fulfilled if these are. They're always linearly independent. This is also a little bit like R condition. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. So that's what I just said. Yeah. If we choose N, then we get a linearly independence here. Or we have linearly independence. And a very important definition is now the following. We say uh, the basic Lagrange vector. I would like to also give here an idea what we are talking about. The basic Lagrange vector. So if you remember the nonlinear standard optimization case, uh, we have not LICQ, but we have MFCQ, then we know that the set of Lagrange triangle is the polyhedron, around the polyhedron. Okay, and we know of course 
from convexity, that all the points in this bounded polyhedron of Lagrange multipliers can be disjoint as a convex combination of the corner points of the vertices. Yeah. So, and we can, if we, would, if we would take this definition and write it down for our standard optimization, we would get that these are the so called basic Lagrange vectors. Yeah. So, everything what we are talking about when we are talking about this polyhedron of Lagrange multipliers can be uh, boiled down to considerations of these vertices. Yeah. And this is also what Kojima did in the algebraic characterization of strong stability for the case that MFC crew, but not the linear independence constraint modification is fulfilled. He talked about conditions on these points, on these uh, Lagrange multiplier points. Yeah, and with these conditions on these five points here, he got the conditions for all the rest. So and this is what we are uh, generalized to in some sense. As we say, that this then comes out in the theory, of course. Uh, we define a set of so called basic Lagrange vectors for which we uh, formulate conditions for strong stability. And then we have four. Yeah? So the definition looks a little bit technical, and that's why I put this idea to say. This is exactly that when we're looking at the standard uh, optimization program. Okay? And, uh, okay, so we call it a zero of two bar x bar at the set of basic Lagrange vectors for this problem at the point under consideration. Okay? And for each, now we, when we come to that, we only formulate conditions for these basic Lagrange vectors. Parenthesis, and we get so conditions for all of these Lagrange multipliers. Yeah, the idea is the same as in the nonlinear case. And what we do first here, yeah, very similar to that, what we know, we define a corresponding tangent space, which is defined uh, as here. Remember now, here we have this I star. I star of a vector was the set of components, of those components where we have non-zero components. Yeah. Okay, and now comes this condition C. Let me uh, look at here. So we, we look at, again, we look now only at these basic Lagrange vectors here. And we say that is that the basic Lagrange vector fulfills condition C star. This is uh, what we almost know a little bit. We take the Hessian of the Lagrangian at this point, at the point x bar, and taking this uh, basic Lagrange vector here, and we restrict it to the corresponding tangent space, which is given here. This is also not a surprise. And we say that this is positive definite, and also here. And you see, if you look very carefully, you see the difference to the nonlinear case. The difference is this. We have not, as in the standard case, Hessian restricted to tension space must be positive definite. But we have Hessian times the vector. So we are talking about positive definite, which means well, times the sign of the vector, because now it's more than one, you know, is positive definite. And that should hold for uh, all components from certain index set here, as a little where P bar, the O bar is zero, components of O bar which are zero, and of course, again, those which uh, are at case. Let me make this picture again, because this is very important. We are looking always here at these points. And again, if we are here or here, this is the quality constraint as in some case. Okay? So that means if both should be positive, do you need? Both should have the same sign, and it should not be zero. Yeah. So this is the condition we need. So that is a pretty strong condition now, and it is a little bit different. Of course, in the nonlinear case, we have no negative Lagrangian multiplier components, but here in C stationary is possible. Yeah. So that both are negative, then it's fine. And then 
this is not a problem, but it's not possible that we have, we have here uh, different signs, respectively the one than zero. Okay. Um, now we get the theorem which also presents a necessary condition. If we have strong stability, no, that's written here. If we have a point which is strongly stable, then a uh, uh, the basic Lagrange vector fulfills condition C star whenever this condition holds. So what does this condition mean? It means that if we have a pair which is uh, where both are active, then it is not possible that those Lagrange multiplier components are equal to zero. And zero, zero is not possible. Uh, as we have that here, this is uh, on the sets where the components of all uh, are zero, and here the sigma <coughs> bar are zero. And uh, if this belongs to the set of kink points, let's say, yeah, where both gradients are active, this is not possible that we consider a pair with zero, zero. And actually, uh, to be honest, this is a big problem. And we don't know up to now how to manage such a situation that you have uh, that both Lagrange multipliers are zeros. And what can we say about strong stability in that case? This is what uh, this is an open question, not only for C stationarity, also for other stationarity concepts. I have 45 minutes. Go on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the you have, uh, I would say, 10 minutes okay. or something. Okay. I feel like more if I have more. Okay. Okay, so let's see how far I will come here. Now, let, we have the condition C star now, and this is the condition where we have Hessian times the branch multiplier component restricted to the tangent space is positive. Okay, so let us consider several uh, small cases we have considered. That was the case we started with many years ago. Yeah, we, took not, we took n plus one constraints. Yeah, what can we say about this case? As I assume that the number of uh, active constants is n plus one, then we can uh, say this relationship between uh, the C and MFCQ and the constraint qualification too. I told you already that um, in the nonlinear, in the standard nonlinear optimization case, MSCQ is a necessary condition for strong stability, but this is not the case here, as we will see in a moment. Uh, okay. Um, when we have n plus one and c equal two holes, then that means that uh, we have exactly that. Uh, the uh, observer here, right? Yeah. Then there exists a uniquely determined direction, alpha bar and beta bar, which is up to a common multiple, so it is a line, we are saying, um, that we have had such a combination which is equal to zero. So this combination, if you remember the, uh, the standard cases and one of the moments constraint qualification is there's no such combination with non negative uh, branch multipliers. And here we got something similar. So uh, if CQ2 holds, then there exists a uniquely determined vector for the direction such that, such that we got here uh, this combination of the active constraints. Uh, again, that we have. Uh, uh, complementarity constraints and also that the product of alpha m bar and beta m bar is not equal to zero. So not, none of them can put be zero. And again, this is for this uh, index set, which is of interest. Again, the last one, the king set. Uh, yeah, where the king is. Okay. Uh, then for this special case, and under the assumption that this constraint qualification true is fulfilled, we get that uh, for a strongly stable point, we have that there are exactly uh, maximal two 
of a basic Lagrange matrix. Right? So basic Lagrange matrix that is also you know, in the standard case, these are the vertices of the, the Lagrange matrix that are polyhedral. Okay? And uh, we look at the problem here that we have exactly two. We can also very easy that it's uh, pretty trivial for one and for zero. And uh, we assume that uh, E0 of sigma 1 uh, intersected by this king set is empty. That means we put all the zeros on one side. This is not a problem, we only need to interchange the order. R1, S1, and S1, R1, so all the zeros on one side and all the non zeros on the other side, and we know we excluded the case that both are zero. So that's only a technical trick in order to make it easier to handle. Okay. And then we uh, get here the first equivalent. Yeah, this is the equivalent characterization that is a challenge. I explained it in the beginning. So a point, a C stationary point is strongly stable. If this uh, vectors uh, fulfill the condition C star, and we have here the condition about the sides. You know, certain, uh, let me say certain, I don't go here in technical details, that they have different sides for uh, certain indices. So what we have here is C star. That we have seen, yeah, the second order condition with Hessian, and a condition about the sign of the Lagrange multiplier components. Okay, remember we are still, as it is written here on the top, we are still in the case of n plus one active constraints, as is very special. <laughs> okay, but this is what I already mentioned twice in red now. There is no relation to C in FC2. So whether or not C and C is full, it doesn't play a role here. The condition for the equivalent condition for strong stability is written here, condition C star, and this condition about different sides of the components, of the corresponding components of the Lagrange multipliers. And uh, I come back to my introductory example. Um, this was fiction, and uh, I said it already, there is a simple example, very simple functions. We are in the R3, in the three-dimensional case, linear, 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 and the picture looks like that. Now we perturb a little bit. Yeah? We shift it a little bit, and then we got this. As you see, the per per perturbation is here at the real parameter, epsilon, epsilon, and here that this stays as it was, and you see the shifting is here in this direction. So how does it look? This is as a number perturbed set. Uh, we call it here uh, R epsilon and S bar. Um, let me go back. You see that at the point zero, zero, obviously the, uh, the kings are here, both for both constraints. But the question is what happens at this case, at this point? And the other points are like the property constraints. And um, so what happens? We will see it. What happens at these two points now? When we, when we take them off, so when we make a topological change, you know, the first set is connected, and these are not connected. There are two disconnected components here. And we see the following. Only one of them is the C stationary point, namely that here. This is a red one. This is not C stationary. So although we have here topological change, we stay stable. This is a little bit counterintuitive, but this is exactly what we get here. Yeah. Um, as you see, okay. Now we have seen C of C group is not necessarily full field, not necessarily full field in order to get strong stability. Now let us look at the case where we have that. Um, Minutes more, moment, or the rest of it. I mean, I, I can send you the papers if you are interested in. So, there are other cases we have considered, and we have also, I said it already in the beginning, let me repeat, we have also looked at strong stability for n stationary points and s stationary points. 
um, which uh, will be in this special volume, which comes out in October from the Power Magic Optimization Conference in Augsburg two weeks ago. Yeah, then I uh, finish here. Thank you very much. Is the same the historical stability in the sense that you require uniqueness in the solution in a neighborhood of the problem where you can target the problem? Uh, I, 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 you need this in the neighborhood continuity, continuity existence, uniqueness, and continuity. So this is the concept of well, process in the sense of the no. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not a specialist in, in, in the process, yes. but I know that they are looking exactly at these three four properties. Or these three properties. You need it, yeah, and, and, and of course, they use this in another context. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. They use it in another context. Standard yeah. optimization problem for this thing. Yeah, yeah. but that's also for, for differential equations. Yes. 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 Uh, so I'm not, but I cannot say. Exactly say yes or no, it's exactly the same. Mm -hmm. But I know when I go to a workshop on helplessness, yes. then they are talking about the three properties yes. which we are also using. That's why I, I, I mentioned that to say there is some relationship, but I'm not sure if it is equivalent. No, okay. <laughs> well, we considered it a long time ago in, in our book, we were. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we call Kalanat world motionless in this case we consider it the, the optimal set as an infinite transition problem can be not a, a unique optimal solution can be compact compact is a requirement compact and other properties yes. mm -hmm. uh, gives rise to a kind of world motionless different that perhaps not so nice it's not so mm -hmm. strong and we call it hard but it's just you know that you you put it for a linear problem yes linear so, problem. yeah as yeah. 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 in the second order condition we not play really a role. No, no, yeah. no, no, yeah. no, 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 And I don't know, it's a compactness is important, yeah? To the boundaries is the optimal set. But it's very conditional. It's the optimal set, yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. If you don't have boundaries of the optimal set, many properties, lower set of continuity, yeah. et cetera, are lost. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you yeah. Can yeah. Yeah. So you can explode. To the close. Yeah. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Uh, this way, uh, uh, this is very related with my my question. Uh, do you think that the linear case is still challenging enough? Um, because you uh, showed the linear example, and but, uh, the linear case is simpler. But do you think there are um, open problems to be solved uh, concerning the stability? Uh, in your strata with linear functions? Okay. Or, or, or it may be perhaps uh, trivial. I don't I, I am not saying it's trivial. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I think there are two things. One, the one thing is, uh, of course, if you are looking at this, let's, for example, n plus one constraints, yes. then of course, they, uh, if you are restricted to the tangent space, then you always zero. As mm -hmm. they, yeah. Yeah. So then we cannot mm -hmm. positive beginning is automatically fulfilled. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is one moment that I don't know if you construct it in such a way that you like this is linear, mm -hmm. but uh, for condition C star we need a shim mm -hmm. restricted to a tangent space. And if the tangent space is zero, then uh, this is also fulfilled. Yes, yeah. Yeah. This is one comment. I will perhaps. In that case, if it is not, if the change of space is not zero, then in the linear case you have no positive dependence because mm -hmm. it's zero. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the second comment is um, I already mentioned that. What, in our opinion, especially Daniel and I, mm -hmm. think the problem, the big problem which is absolutely unsolved and we don't know how to manage that. Is when those are zero. And here are oh, yes. the, the, the corresponding for such a pair where both are active, the corresponding Lagrange multiplier components are zero. Mm -hmm. 
this opens. But it's open in the sense that you found examples in which any possible situation happens. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So there must be something more that to play, play, which is yes. stronger. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. 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 Any other question or comment? Right. If not, thank you again. Thank you very much.